Hello, everybody. It is Mike Young with Mike Young Real Estate, and I am back here for another real estate discussion of importance to pretty much anybody that owns a home. It doesn't matter if it's a detached house, apartment, condo, townhouse, whatever it might be. We're talking about radon gas. Can you see from behind me? I've got like a little graphic behind me to kind of show the Earth's the surface of the Earth and what happens below the Earth, and then what happens in in your 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 house, your building up there in the corner. But before we get into the radon gas, let me introduce myself. I'm Mike Young. I'm a real estate agent. I've been licensed since 2006. Work mainly in the Raleigh, Wake Forest areas of the of the Triangle, but anything that touches that, including Cary, Rollsville, uh, areas of Franklin County, Warren County, Vance County, Granville County, and Durham. Those are pretty much my areas of specialty with a focus, like I said, on Wake Forest area and Raleigh area. And you may or may not know that Wake Forest is actually in three different counties, <laughs> the town of Wake Forest, or the zip code at least, in Granville County, Franklin County, and also Wake County. So also be sure to join our, our community groups, the biggest of which are Wake Forest community information and Raleigh community information, as you might think, being that as my area specialty. So those can be accessed at wfci.one or rci.one from any browser or just go to trianglegrapevine.org and click on groups. You'll find all of our groups there. So let's get in the radon gas. What is it? First of all, let's start off with what it is. It truly is dangerous. It is a known carcinogen. Apparently, humans have been, it's been proven scientifically that radon gas does cause cancer in humans. So you want to avoid it. Now, how do you avoid it? Why is it a problem? And where is it present? First of all, as you can see behind me uh, on the soil where it emits from, it's all rising up. You see from the soil, whether it's through well water, to my right, or just soil itself and rising up, it's actually naturally occurring in the earth. So there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing we can do is prevent it from building up in spaces where we spend time. Now, this could be your home. It could be a place that you own. It could be a place that you rent. It could be a place where you work and go to work during the day. It could be in your car, I guess, technically. Although I think most cars are so leaky, they're not going to hold up much gas. Uh, like that and accumulate. And also, if you think about it, it's more prevalent in areas where there's less ventilation and higher energy efficiency. So newer houses are potentially going to be more of a problem than older houses. And if you, or if you have an older house that you've retrofitted and made more energy efficient, it could be actually a significantly larger problem than even a newer house. So how do you deal with it? Basically, you prevent, there's two things you want to do. You want to, number one, prevent it from entering in your home in the first place. And if it's there, you want to get rid of it. So getting rid of it is pretty darn easy. All you got to do is open the windows. But of course, if it's freezing outside in the wintertime or it's boiling hot outside in 100% humidity, you are not going to want to open the windows. And that's when most of your exposure occurs. It's when you're all, you know, you've got all the windows down and it's at the extremes of temperature. So it's really, this is uh, an issue for modern humans. It's not an issue that humans in the past have had to deal with, you know, but, but since we've all moved indoors, this is now a major issue. And a lot of times this stuff goes undiagnosed. You figure, oh, why does this person get sick? We don't know. Well, it could have just been from radon gas. Maybe this person spends a lot of time in living spaces where there is a high level of radon gas. Now, easy enough, it can be tested for. You just get one of these devices that tests for radon gas. And if you're buying a home, I highly encourage you to test, whether it's brand new or an existing home. We can do that through a home inspector and get everything done so that it's, it's legit and that people, including the seller, will potentially react to it, depending upon market conditions, of course. Um, with a strong seller's market that we have right now, they may not do anything. But at least you'll know, and it's not that difficult to fix. This is not rocket science, okay? It's not like you gotta tear the house down if they find high levels of radon gas in there. What you do need to do is mitigate it. So you need to find where it's coming in. So let me scoot to the side here. You can see on this, on this area right behind me, it's coming from either the, the soil or the well water. So if you have well water, even a municipal source that's sourced from wells as opposed to lakes and things like that, you may have radon gas in your water, which means it's going to come out potentially in the shower. You can see up there uh, and you know, or any faucet for that matter. But in the shower is your highest likelihood of exposure because in the shower, you are spending a lot of time there and the water is close to your head. You're breathing it in. Again, this is only an issue if you know and you need to know where your water source is from and if it's from a well source it could potentially be contaminated with radon gas. And there's special tests for that, just a test for the gas coming out of the water. Most of the tests that we do on real estate 
are just for, for the general air in the house, not specifically something coming out of the faucet. So that's a, a specific test, a more specific test. But again, you only need it if you have water that is sourced from wells, not from the surface. And most people have water sourced from the surface. Most dwelling units do anyway. Uh, not to say that everyone does, because of course they don't. You, you have your own piece of land, your own property, you're gonna have to get it from your own private well, so get it tested. Now, this house has a basement, as you can see. This house uh, beside me has or is it, a basement. And the easiest way to mitigate is at the lowest point in the house. And most basements have a sump pump to deal with potential flooding issues, which happen from time to time with any basement. It mitigates water that might end up building up under the surface of that slab or, or around it and flood your basement. So that's the lowest point. So all you gotta do is connect the pipe to this sump, run it outside the house, and then up to the highest point above the roof line. You may have seen these, they're just, they're just straight PVC pipes. Some of them are outside like that if it's a retrofit. Some of them are inside the house if it's uh, something that was done on new construction. You can do it inside the house and not even see any of that. It'll just be another protrusion coming out of the roof and just make sure you flash it well so you don't have any leaks there. But the idea is you're just basically taking that air source and you're running it up to the highest point above the house so the air source coming in from the ground doesn't have a chance to build up in the house. Now, most of the time you're gonna to need to have a powered fan, an electrical fan and a gauge that's showing that suction is actually taking place so that you are sucking air out from underneath of that slab over here and none of that air is getting into the living space. The same idea uh, is used with a crawl space or a slab. It can be a little bit more difficult to put something in on an existing slab if there's no sump pump. Crawl space is a little bit different than what I'm saying right here, but the, the, the general idea is the same, which is you're, you're gonna suck, like you suck air through a straw. You're gonna suck all that ground air that's coming in from the earth, which likely contains radon, and you're going to suck that through the straw and out and away from your home to protect you. So hopefully that makes sense. And as you can see, this is not very complicated. And it's something that can be taken care of relatively inexpensively. When I say inexpensively, I mean one to two to three thousand dollars, depending upon the construction of your home and the, the size of your home. So it's not that big of a deal. And you know what's your your health worth? But you know, of course, if you spend a lot of time in your house, this is going to mean a lot more to you than if you don't spend that much time in your house. So people who spend a lot of time in their house, you really want to get this uh, looked at for sure. And this is something that changes over time as pressures change as the, the, your habits in the house change, as things below you in the earth that you can't even see change, these things change. So it's something you wanna get checked over time. And again, any building, even like a condo building, although condo buildings have much, much lower risk of any of this happening, especially if you are not in a unit that's on the, on the bottom floor, but it still could happen on the list. So you wanna get it checked out. I mean, even actually there are some sources of natural stone products such as granite countertops, which will emit radon gas naturally. It's just that they're relatively small stones and they are not usually anywhere near the mass of the earth that's below your dwelling unit. So they won't really put off anything that's uh, really that measurable. But needless to say, if you think, you know, if you have granite countertops and you are concerned about your health, you might wanna have some kind of active ventilation system or energy recovery ventilating system in your home. And I can do a video about that actually in the future. I've, I've been familiar with these systems since actually the late 90s when I installed one my, in my house myself and nobody else, even HVAC people even knew what I was talking about. So they're, they're very, very great things to have. Although it's really for homes that are incredibly tightly sealed and people that are incredibly concerned about their health. Those are the people that want um, to, to look into those things. So if you have any questions about radon gas, please let me know in the comments below. Please share this video with anybody that is interested. And again, you know, if you uh, want to join our community groups, if you're local to North Carolina or Raleigh Triangle area, and you're, or you're thinking of moving there, it's a great area. People are moving here every day. More and more people, as I've lived here, have been moving to the area every single day. It's an incredibly popular area. It's got a great mix of everything. So consider doing it if you haven't. And just even if you want to find out about the area, join our groups, wfci.one or rci.one. In any browser, you'll go straight there. There's an approval process, but we'll get you approved pretty quickly. And you know, of course, if you need any help, any, any uh, advice for real estate, anything like that, please reach out to me. I'll give you my direct mobile right now. It's 240-205-0417. You can also find other videos I've done. Wherever you're watching this video, look in the history. If you're in our groups, look in the announcements and you know, lots more topics. And if you have any other topics you want me to cover, 
by all means, please let me know in the comments. You know, I love talking about real estate. There's always like an endless amount of things to talk about and we will hopefully be covering them on and on into the future here. So I look forward to talking with you soon and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.